Ah, Christmas, full of traditions. While most people would have the winter with snow, snowmen, hot chocolate, and chestnuts, the other half of the world, like in Australia, has a hot summer instead. One tradition I love doing is watching beloved Christmas movies. There's many movies I grew up with and loved watching. Home Alone, The Polar Express, and The Grinch. So I'll be talking about a Christmas movie I never watched as a kid. Though I did love listening to the song. I'm talking about none other than Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. When you think of this icon of Christmas, you probably think of the song or the stop-motion movie by Rankin Bass. Or maybe even the hand-drawn movie done by Good Times Entertainment. The consensus on this movie is that the Rankin Bass is the superior version of the story, while the Good Times version is lackluster. But if you want my two dollars, I'd say that while the Rankin Bass version is pretty good, I think the Good Times version is better. To say why I think so, I'll list my six reasons why the Good Times adaptation is better than the Rankin Bass version. The animation in the Good Times version is okay for the most part, but what I love is that it creates more unique designs for all of the other reindeers, as opposed to the Rankin Bass version where the reindeers just look the same except for Comet who wears a hat. Another example of Good Times' great character designs would be the elves, as they're in different sizes and shapes, while the Rankin Bass made them look too similar, with Hermie and the lead elf being the exception. The detail in the Good Times adaptation makes a much more diverse cast of characters and holds my attention. If I wanted to watch movies with cookie cutter characters, I would have watched the Smurfs. The two movies approach the Red Nose with different emotions. We all know the story. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. In the Rankin Bass version, Rudolph's parents attempt to cover Rudolph's nose and later force it on him. While I know they were trying to help him, it made things worse when the Red Nose was revealed. This puts shame and guilt on the Red Nose plotline. This is further escalated in the Reindeer games. In the Rankin Bass special, we barely see any of the Reindeer games. They're only mentioned. Instead, we see the Reindeers on flight, then Rudolph's nose is revealed. This leads to Santa shaming his own Reindeers just because Rudolph's nose is revealed as glowing red. This is completely opposite to the Good Times adaptation. This movie instead shows Rudolph's parents helping him be himself. As for the Reindeer games, the Good Times make the Reindeer games be portrayed as a big event. Hermie, the elf that Rudolph befriends, gets the worst treatment when he's threatened to be fired if he doesn't get the toys finished. However, he then suddenly gets scolded for not showing up to elf practice. You literally told him to finish the toys left over. Can you make up your mind, lead elf? Granted, I'm glad that Rudolph chose to ignore the reindeers when he grew up, but still. I know Bumble the Abominable Snowman is an iconic character in the Rankin Bass special, but because he's mostly a raging beast, he lacks both a mental state and personality. Stormella, on the other hand, has a much bigger presence in the movie. She has a good design, she's voiced by Whoopi Goldberg, which is bizarre casting, and yet it works. She first appears barging into Santa's workshop, attempting to kidnap the elves that destroyed her eye statues, but Santa doesn't let her. So she closes her ice bridge that Santa needs to pass with the threat of starting a huge snowstorm if anyone dared to cross it. And since then, no one has crossed it yet. That is until Rudolph ran away, Zoe went to look for him. She crossed Dormella's bridge and was kidnapped. Rudolph hears of this, so he, along with Slyly, a fox, and a polar bear named Leonard, who he befriends, go to her castle to find Zoe. The first attempt to rescue her fails, and Rudolph and Leonard get captured. So Slyly helps out, and the snowstorm begins. Despite being cornered, Stormella almost falls off a cliff, but Rudolph saves her. With Whoopi Goldberg's voice and nice design, I'd say she has a much better personality compared to Bumble the Abominable Snowman, who has no personality. 
She also has a mix of sass, and even though Rudolph wishing Stormella to be nice was forced, and could have either been cut for pacing purposes, or changed to have Rudolph say, we can all go home if you promise to be good from now on, she still has a good impact on the story. When it comes to the love interest in both versions, there's Clarice in the Rankin Bass version, and Zoe in the Good Times version. Clarice may have more depth due to her seeing Rudolph's fake nose at first, and then when seeing his normal nose, she says that she still think he's cute, but Zoe has more screen time compared to Clarice. An example of Zoe's life is when you see her with Arrow, her eventual ex-boyfriend. Arrow wants to be in Santa's team for bragging rights and cheats in the reindeer games. What a rain douche. However, the ref considers him winning by default because of Rudolph's accident that was egged on by Arrow. Zoe points this out and breaks up with him. When she hears that Rudolph runs away, she goes to look for him. Although, her worries cause her to not think and ends up being kidnapped by Stormella. This version shows more of a healthy relationship as opposed to what the Rankin-Bass version does with giving Clarice only four whole scenes of screen time. When you think of Saint Nick, or Santa Claus, how do you describe him personality-wise? He's jolly and friendly. The Good Times version commits to him being supportive and friendly, as opposed to the Rankin-Bass version who acts way out of character. Claims he hopes that Rudolph would outgrow his glowing nose if he's ever to pull his sleigh in the future, and just ditching the elf practice afterwards. The Good Times adaptation does the character much better, when he sees Rudolph, Santa assures him he'll do great things. Not only that, John Goodman's voice acting made for a pretty solid casting choice. Rudolph's father is one of the reindeers in Santa's sleigh. Donna is the Rankin-Bass version, and Blitzen in the Good Times version. For why I think Blitzen's the better father is because he feels like a real supportive father. He's not forcing a disguise that Rudolph is uncomfortable with, and rather shows Rudolph what the outside is like. And the whole, his nose was an accident, was more to defend his son from harm when Rudolph was unfairly disqualified for his nose glowing, and it's a misunderstanding. And just in case people wonder, I do agree with a few other things that do hold back the Good Times adaptation, and there are aspects of the Rankin-Bass version that I do like. I don't find Rudolph's friends in the Good Times version that interesting compared to the Rankin-Bass. The animation is mostly okay, and the movie could have easily been a direct-to-video slash DVD instead of being in theaters. And I'm not fond of the wish scene after Rudolph saves Stormella. At the same time, some people would say you can't have a story of a character overcoming adversity if you watered down the message with musical numbers and characters supporting him. To counter this, it's better than no support for Rudolph, and with that, that's the six reasons why I think the Good Times adaptation is better than the Rankin-Bass version. Do you agree with this list? What's your take on the two Rudolph movies? If Rudolph's not your thing, what's your favorite Christmas movie? I'll be sitting down to watch my favorite tonight, The Polar Express. Please subscribe to my channel, like the video, and comment the answers to those questions. And until next time, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.